Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Back to the AAS YouTube channel. And this is a reboot of a new series. It's the education series. And I am super happy to have Kawatemuk Mendez Rosas with us today. And Hi. hello, Frank. And hello, everybody. It's, uh, it's very nice to be with you. Greetings from Guadalajara, Mexico. Mexico, awesome. Uh, and is that like the city square circle behind you, or what yes. is the image of? Well, actually, since we're starting with astronomy, Frank, let me tell you the name of the. This is the most iconic uh, roundabout in the city. The name is La Minerva. La Minerva. It's actually the Roman name for Bellatrix. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Like the, the Lady Warrior, she's supposed to defend us from every evil that may reach the city. La Minerva, so next time you come and visit uh, Mexico, make sure you pay a visit to Guadalajara. I will absolutely do that. That is fantastic. That's really great. Um, so this is the education series. And so are you, where are you teaching? Where, where do you practice the art? Okay, actually, um, I teach in Tec de Monterrey. Tec de Monterrey is the biggest private university here in Mexico. Okay. It has 29 campuses, and most of them have their own high school. Actually, I teach at high school level. Normally, I oh, teach right. in math. And six, six years ago, I had this great opportunity to teach astronomy. Ah, very nice. Very nice. Um, so it's kind of like a feeder system. They have high schools that then feed the universities. Is that how yes. that works? Got yes, it. Actually. Got it. Um, and so you started this course six years ago, and I'm always curious how people get into astronomy, right? So what was your what was kind of your first exposure, or how did you get into astronomy? Um, okay. I'm sure, like most people did, it started when I was at um, elementary school. I was a hobbyist because here in Mexico, every Sunday we had a chance to watch a TV cosmos with Carl Sagan. Ah, there we go. Yeah. Also, I don't know if you remember this show. Uh, before Cosmos, we had the new wilderness with Lauren Green. Both of them were my yeah. favorite TV shows. Yeah. So they, and maybe okay. this is why those are my favorite topics. I mean, astronomy and animal behavior. <laughs> That's how we started with it. And uh, then, yeah. uh, as, as usual, I joined the local astronomical society. Mm -hmm. And everything uh, got punched when the director of the school where I teach invited me to design a new elective course. So introduction to astronomy was my, my choice and everything since that moment, I mean, actually I don't come from the astronomical field. I come from education field, uh -huh. master degrees in education and cognitive development. And mm -hmm. as a teacher, when you had the chance to design your own course, it's like funding gold. So everything became lovely since then. And to tell you the truth, at the beginning, the course was based on eh, some readings. I may have some basic concepts, uh -huh. but it became more interesting when I had the chance to go to the first astronomy teachers meeting, which happened at Baltimore. Oh, okay. Cater, an organization, Center for Astronomy and Physics Education Research. Yeah, so I had this chance and I met uh, incredible people. I mean, astronomy teachers are awesome for me, very gentle. They share with me activities, ways to explain different things. And I was like, wow, this is what I really want to do with my teaching life. Awesome. Yes, that, that happened there. And um, also, when, when, was the, when was the Baltimore meeting? When was that? I believe it was like uh, two... 2018, I believe. Okay. Okay. And since there, I, I started some really good friendships. Teachers, teachers share with me some activities. Again, some of them have their own YouTube channels, which are quite great. Mm -hmm. and so I, I realized everything I could do with my astronomy course, right? How to empower my astronomy course. I invite some of them to bring a talk my oh, students. Nice. Oh, nice. That's a great idea. Uh -huh. Yes. And also, um, I got the, the chance to read because I was looking for everything that could help me to really improve my course. 
Now I had the chance to find a research paper with someone which I'm a huge fan. I mean, I'm sure actually he's a friend of yours, uh, which is by Dr. Chris Impey oh, about yeah. Chris. <laughs> students in your astronomy online course. So for me, it was Frank like, like finding the mana in the desert. <laughs> and I, I learned a lot, of, a lot of that. And well, as you already know, uh, we got pandemics, right? Yes. So I had to switch my oh. base, base course. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay, I had to switch my face-to-face -face course to the online version with no idea, idea about it. And I found this really enlightful videos from the AAS. Mm -hmm. which I'm very grateful. And, and they told us about how to, how to switch to the online version, how to communicate better, how to engage students in the online version, how to manage, for example, the discussion forum, how to be present, how to be answering at least. And I believe it was your, the one who said this, it should not take more than 48 hours for me to respond to some comment. Yeah. Those were really key elements to, to improve the course and students, students love it so far. Actually, it became so popular then, instead of uh, having the course just happening here at Guadalajara, uh -huh. it, the last two years, well, year and a half, it was broadcasted to nine different campuses. Awesome. Campuses Good. in all the Pacific region, right? So it was quite interesting because cool. students have we're sharing the same class with people from Chihuahua, Monterrey, uh, Morelia, Colima, Veracruz, and they got the sense of we are living in a planet, not just in a classroom, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so uh, are, are you still doing that online? Or are you back in person now? Or are you doing both online and in person? Well, actually, um, I got, how you say when you I don't know if this is appropriate to say it. How, how you say when you taste for the first time something that you enjoyed quite much? I became addicted to it. <laughs> okay, okay, got it. Now we are running both versions. A little candy. You ran both? Club, in, the, in the school and out of the school also. Oh, nice, okay. Uh, let me tell you, Frank, astronomy here okay. in Mexico, and I say this with all due respect, it's not quite a popular topic. I mean, you may only find astronomy in less than four institutions and only for postgraduate degrees. So yeah. I, I, I truly believe that, that astronomy is quite interesting because it helps you to, to think critically and all that stuff. And this is why we are taking the course out of the school also in a more public way. Good, very good. Very good. So when, when you run your course, um, what are what are like some of the activities that you have them do or how do you structure the course? And is is the course uh, sort of uh, a universe, you know, cosmology course, you know, um, or is it more like a, a solar systems course? Yeah, or yeah. actually, it's more a solar system. I mean, this is introduction to astronomy, just right. OK, and got it. Most of my students know nothing about astronomy, which helps me. So if I say some line, no one will notice it. Um, let, let me share with you some some special moments. We we start with constellations. Okay, mm -hmm. it's quite catchy for those who have who know no think nothing about astronomy. I mean, how to spot north with the pointer stars, mm -hmm. Cassiopeia, uh, Orion. Orion is quite interesting for for them because once and, and also the zodiac. And once they have learned about those constellations. We have the first um, outreach session and the nice guy to stargaze. So they they realize that hey, that is the textbook. Okay, <laughs> it's real. <laughs> yes, it's quite interesting because we we use this strategy, uh, which is learning by teaching. Yeah. So, so as soon as they learn that, they do you know that they're going to explain that to their family, to their friends, and it becomes very popular. So for the second like for the second stargazing session, we have also some guests. So instead of having just 30, 30 teenagers, 
we we have had like 70 maybe 80 of them very cool it comes yes so that's how we start with the course uh, constellations are these uh, when you when you do that observing session? Is this naked eye astronomy, or do you do you put out scopes, or you have binoculars, or what well, do you? Do? I, actually, um, thanks to the learnings I got from the paper of how to engage students, I earned a grant in in my school. So the, I earned some resources to buy the first telescope collection for the school. So we do naked eye, and also we use telescope, and we have refractors. We have a uh, uh, Dobsonians and yeah. we have astronomical um, binoculars. Oh, cool. Wow. Very yes, nice. Congratulations. Sorry, what? Congratulations on your grant. Congratulations yes, on picking up the scopes. That's yes, thank you. And uh, we're, I mean, at the beginning, we have no telescope. So we, I had to ask my, my friends from the local astronomical society. They mm -hmm. were generous, as you know. Most people in astronomy are quite generous. <laughs> and now that we have our own collection, we also share it with them. Cool. Very cool. Uh, so that's one activity. What do you what do you then cover, let's say, after constellations, or what is your next major topic that you cover? Um, we uh, start with the sun and planets, but I'd like to share with you also that in every partial, there are three partials during the semester. Okay. Discussion forum. And the first topic is, what is time? And it's quite interesting that they used to think that they know everything about it, but they start to dig for information and read. And the, the discussion forum has two phases. And the first one, you must share a content, short video, a short research paper, whatever, in the forum. And for the second week, you must make at least one comment in a okay. content shared by your classmate. Cool. So you really see a discussion taking a high cognitive level about, yes. hey, is there actually something called time? What do we measure when we think we are measuring time? And I think, Frank, this actually enhances one of the pillars of the course, which is humbleness. Okay, good. Because they realize that they are, they are got, get aware that they actually know nothing about something they used to think they know everything, right? The second, the second discussion forum is what is, what is life? Okay. And the one is what is intelligence? Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Those are big topics. Yeah. yeah. So it, again, the, the, the talk among them is quite, quite interesting. And um, they, I can sense that they do engage because they don't come in just to one classmate. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. at least to seven of them. They do more than what they are asked for. Yes. And as this paper explained, this is how you get aware that you are engaging. Yes. That's, that's right. Very cool. So, so how, how long is the course? Is this like a seven week course, an eight week course, a 15 week course? What is this? One semester. One semester here okay. is like four months. I know it's six, it should be six, but in this practice, School, it takes four months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also one special moment is about the final project. Oh, the okay. Final, it's actually an activity that Dr. Katy Berryhill shared with me. Mm -hmm. She's an amazing yeah. astronomy teacher. I met her at the CAPER event. Mm -hmm. um, this activity is they, they have to design some, a trip to some space destination. Whether okay. it learn about that that place in the course or if they found about that by their, themselves and they should tell what is the distance what is the direction from earth in okay. order to reach that place what are the conditions on that place and also since they are trying to sell us that space trip what are the tourist the tourist attractions for example if you're going to reach europa uh, diving could be quite <laughs> ice skating and also the most important part about this project and i really get excited even when i explain it is they also have to add and this is the creative part on the cognitive development process good they have to add some fantasy elements for okay. example what is the the local food the local okay. flora and the local fauna but those fantasy elements yeah. should be based in the real physics and in the real chemistry of the place. 
Okay. This Good. is when they use something that they like a lot, which is about um, comparative planetology. You know, okay, have a rocky planet, same density as Earth, but bigger, so it has more mass. And so it has to, it's going to be, have what? More gravity or less gravity. And right. according to that, how is its atmosphere going to look like? So what will be the condition for life happening there? And this is like the best way to close the, the semester because they invite again their family, they invite their friends. And it's it's fantastic because this is how they became aware of how important the conditions are for life, right? Yes. And um cool. Far, I like to share with you the most important thing I have heard from my students on the course is, you know, at dinner time, this is the topic. What we learn here, this is the topic at dinner time with my family. Awesome. For teacher, I think that's the, the most important thing I that's can awesome. add to, to them. Very cool. Very cool. So when they when they do the uh, when they do that, that that any of those three topics, you know, what is time? Um, life universe and, and fantasy do, do they turn in a, a written report or or do you can they do like a video can they just do uh an art piece or what it what is the delivery how do you take no the actually piece? no the, the, the there are only two deliveries okay the first one is they share a content and content they found they okay. do not use it they just produce the, the um, oh at every partial, there is a teamwork that they must produce. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for the first partial, the, the teamwork is they must design the solar system mm -hmm. into the scale of Mexico. Ah, okay. Where would you put Mercury? Where would you put Venus? And what 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 is the right, the real size according to that scale? That model, uh-huh. So they became aware of how far each planet is, right? Yeah, yeah. Sure, so, open their eyes. <laughs> yeah. For the discussion forum, they just have again to share a content for the first week, every one of them. And then for the second week, they just have to comment. And maybe because they don't have to do a lot of work, they feel quite free to start to comment in more, more of them, right? I mean, got it. They really engage in a discussion, not a discussion, in a dialogue, I prefer, yeah. right? And Socratic. to tell you the truth, every semester I learn not something new, but a lot of new things because of that discussion forms. Uh -huh. Oh, yes, <laughs> very definitely. So when you say teams, how, how large are the teams? Are these two-person teams, four-person teams? Uh, four. Four, okay. Four. Okay. In, in, your, in your main experience, your teams are of, about how many? Uh, uh, anywhere from three to six. So four is a very typical number, but I've gone as low as three, and sometimes people just want to work together, and so teams of six uh, can work out. Mm -hmm. I must say that because this is an elective course, mm -hmm. most of them really want to work. Yes. And that makes the difference. Yes. You're here I mean, because you want to be. Very good. Yeah. How many, really how many, what's, what's the, what's a typical enrollment in the course um, on a given? At, at the beginning, at, at the first time we, we run the course, it, they were 21. Okay. Last time we had the course, we had 120 in each group. Nice. In nine different campuses in, in, in the online version. That's amazing growth. That's fantastic. Um, so, let me ask. Uh, let me ask in the future, right? So, so you know, all courses, all you know, develop in time as you learn different stuff, as you pick up new techniques, um, as the size of the course grows, right? Because there's probably some things you can do with a course of 21 versus things you can do with a course of uh, you know 190 per per shot. So, so if you if you look into the short term future, how do you how do you see the course developing? Uh, in the in the learning modalities and in in the pedagogy and how you want to get it yes. across. Well, actually, for the next semester, Frank, I was invited to bring a version of this course to university already. Mm -hmm. Nice. We having groups of fifteen of them. It's just going to be observational astronomy. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen for four days, and I really hope to sure. engage them 
to then join us in the whole semester course. Got it. That's right. how the course is going to evolve again in the in the school. So a little bit of like a, a mini course, an attractant, you know, here, here, here's a case. It's going to happen four times in the semester. Oh, okay, good. So you pick them up uh, multiple times, twice, a, twice a, uh, four times a semester. Yes. Okay, yes, very so good. You may enroll, enroll. Very um, good. Let me share with you, may I, so, some, some deep learning about this? Yes, please. The reason why we really brought astronomy first as a course, you know, as an activity. Um, um, I don't want to get too political on this, but in Mexico, there is a, a quite hard, quite strong propaganda to polarize people. So we thought, hey, sure. what remind us about everything we have share in common, right? Exactly. And that's the real reason why seven years ago, we became with the idea of astronomy. Astronomy God. remind us that, hey, we're all part of the same tribe. Even in this, we are. yes, we are, <laughs> and, and and maybe this is why I really took this. I mean, in my humbleness, I, I have I'm not very skillful in astronomy, at least not yet. I'm looking to have a master's degree in planetary mm -hmm. sciences. So, if you have any advice, that will be more than welcome. But uh, I will, we really want to spread this astronomy topic again inside of the, of the school and out of the school. It's mm -hmm. quite, quite exciting. Very cool, very cool. So you mentioned that there was a, so there's a, uh, there's a local astronomy club in the area that, that yeah. you live on sometimes? Yes, yes, the Sociedad Astronomica Guadalajara, in case okay. they're watching this video, greetings to them. And there are 300 members Ooh. that sometimes happens. There are only like 30 active members. So we join, actually this upcoming Friday, if the weather allow us, we're gonna have a, an activity at the local planetarium with them. Yes, and there is, they are very constant. I mean, every Friday we have a meeting, every Friday we have a talk, it's totally free. Cool. And uh, yes, that's where I learned how to use a telescope. <laughs> to remember the first session, may I talk about this? Absolutely. First session, I mean, I was quite excited with astronomy, so I bought my girlfriend a telescope. The biggest one I found in the shop, again, consider that in Mexico, there are no many shops. Of yeah, this. okay. <laughs> and telescope, I mean, with my savings, it's the one I really, oh, it wow. was the biggest right. one in the shop. Yeah. So we, we said like, hey, there is this local astronomical society. Let's join them. Yes, let's take the telescope. Oh yeah, we're going to be the rock stars in them. And so, we, we came to the first talk and no, no one brings the telescopes to the talk. This is just a talk. Okay, let's go to the first astro camp. There okay, we we bring our telescope. Yeah, bring it. The telescope is an, I don't know if I'm allowed to say a brand, but it's a sure. 70Z. Yeah. I mean, the, you, you know this one, right? The 70Z mm -hmm. from Celestron, a refractor, everyone mm -hmm. starts with it. And we were there and there were this 40 inches <laughs> and we were like, okay, we're going to keep the telescope. In <laughs> it's, let's use those ones. Uh, but it cool. was it was amazing. I mean, the so, first time, the first time we we brought the students to join the local astronomical society in an astro camp. Yeah. It was amazing for them to be using those big telescopes again, listening to to, to astronomers. No, quite quite um, generous, of course. It was 3 a.m. in the morning, and they were spotting uh, Saturn. It was amazing. Nice. And, uh, and, uh, it's it's something. Hopefully, eventually next year we're going to get again. But I, I believe that was a, a really great experience for students to see how important it is to share knowledge. How important it yeah. is. To think, I mean, watching football, soccer, it's fine, but there's also activities about thinking, right? Mm -hmm. And that, that was that was amazing for them. I mean, I still I'm still in contact with every one of my students, and because of the joy of that of that yeah. experience. Okay, very cool, very very cool. Do you use telescopes in your course, Frank? Um. 
No. So uh, my courses tend to be online and large. Okay. And by large, I mean also that the, the student body is global. So I will have students coming in from around the world. So um, can't really organize a local, um, let's yeah. go outside and look at the planets because people are just all over the time zones. So I do do, do them, um, you know, the first activity I have them do is, is uh, as you described a little bit there, is just get outside and look at the night sky. Describe what you see. Take a picture. Talk about it. Spend some time looking at the sky. Um, uh, yes, they move. <laughs> You'd be so surprised. Um, uh, so I do have them do that. And then the other two activities I have them do are a little bit more, um, well, I like to have them, because it is a virtual course, it's an online course, I like to have them get out and do physical activities. Uh, and so one is just get outside and look at the night sky. Uh, and this is a planets course. So this is intro to solar systems. Um, so the second one I have them do is build a pinhole camera, oh. camera obscura. And so we'll measure, yes. I have them measure like uh, um, the radius of the sun or infer the, the distance of the sun, measure the radius of the sun. Wow. Uh, and the moon as well. So I have them. I have them try and do astronomy with just their simple pinhole camera. So it costs them all of almost near nothing to to put together a pinhole camera and look at something. Um, and of course, if there's an eclipse of some sort, a solar eclipse in particular, those pinhole cameras can be pretty good. Uh, and then the third activity I have them do is um, craters. So I have them make a, a regolith, a, a soil, right? Um, uh, from, from a variety of things. Uh, and then they choose their impactors and they smash them into their regolith. And then I have them measure the width of their craters and the depth of their craters. And how does that compare to, you know, craters that are incoming into earth? Um, does it follow the rule of thumb of a certain depth to a certain width ratio or something like that? And if they're different, why are they different? Um, and so, so I do try and get them outside of the computer to do something physical. Interesting, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, I, may, I, may I share something else about the future? Let me share with you yeah. the, the last baby of this course is we designed a 10 sessions course about how to teach astronomy. <laughs> it's going to be to teachers. Again, in Mexico, you're not going to find many astronomy teachers. So we want to teach regular teachers how right. to teach astronomy. And as in October, we're going to have a group from Argentina and a group from Mexico. And it's, I, I think it's going to be interesting because they they have a different different sky than we do. So sure. it's quite interesting to share this. Ooh, that would be, yeah, yeah. Very cool, very cool. So are, the, are these, are these uh, so these, these are astronomy teachers from Argentina coming up? No, no they are science teacher. The, the science teachers, yes, oh, they okay. almost nothing about astronomy. And yeah. again, yeah. we really want to switch uh, about the metacognitive teaching way, how to explain. Mm -hmm. uh, this I, I, we believe nice will help us again to spread astronomy through Latin America, maybe. Yeah, I like that idea a lot. I like that teaching the teachers. I like that idea a lot. <clears throat> on how to well, teach. saying that from you, I mean, I'm sure you have some interesting material. So everything will be more than welcome. Well, I think a lot of part of the, the series that we are rebooting. Uh, so you have the honor, uh, Kwatemuk, of um, kicking off this series. is just to get ideas out there. And so people will hear different ideas on what other people do. And, you know, oh, that could work for my course. Or maybe that doesn't work so well for my course because of X, Y, and Z. But it's important just to hear the ideas and to hear how pe different people do their modalities and their different pedagogy in, in the course itself. Um, uh, so... It's all good. It's all valuable. It's lovely stuff. I did have one question about your course. Do you do you have do you have regular homework when you assignments when you do the course? Do you have like weekly assignments or once a month or something like that? Yes, yes, we we do. It's not quite regular because I must say the high school where I teach is maybe the toughest in the country. Also, okay. the Monterrey. So they already have a lot of uh, homework from calculus. Physics. I mean, I also teach them physics, and they have a lot of homework there. Sure. But yeah, I, I used to to give at least one homework per week, uh, 
for example, and then you have a lot of extra bonus homework. And due to the fact that this is again an elective course, most of the, the, the extra bonus homework, which is, for example, I, I share with them some contents and then uh, they are able for them to read them and they should tell me what was the topic they choose, why, and what have what did they learn from, from, from that content? Again, mm -hmm. actually, my main objective is for them to dig some new information and think about how are they going to share that with others. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's the real, the real thing. We go back to teaching the teachers. <laughs> yes, the four pillars, yes, because they are going to be teachers. The four pillars of this course are uh, the first one, so I already mentioned, is humbleness. The second one is I don't know if this is the right word in English. Human concordance, how to agree. Uh, uh, yes. Uh -huh. Then, of course, mm -hmm. this is part of a STEM course, so it's critical thinking. Good. Uh, yeah. But by no means least, sense of a planet. Mm -hmm. I, I really think that in order to really take care of this planet, we must be aware that hey, we live in a planet, right? And yes, we do. We're not going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> indeed, indeed. So yes. we better take care of it. Indeed, no doubt about it. Right. Do you remember about the first day you actually talked about astronomy to a group? The first time I did. First time I taught. Yes. I do. I, I do. Taught. You gave a lesson. You do. I do remember the first time I I gave a. Uh, I was uh, the instructor for a course. I remember the first time I was an instructor for the course, and the the first time I I did uh, material. Yes. <clears throat> I can see um, from the smile on your face that it was really, really something. <laughs> well, that's an appropriate phrasing for it. Um, so, so yeah, I think it's worthwhile talking talking about that actually um, for a little bit on the lessons that I did learn from that. So, I do remember the first time I did it, and uh, I was a I was a graduate student at Santa Cruz at the time, and it was a summer course. Um, uh, and so that was one type of student. Um, a few years went on and uh, <clears throat> I ended up, for various reasons, I ended up teaching astronomy uh, at an art school. So it was the uh, Chicago, uh, it was uh, the School of Art in um, um, Psych <laughs> in Chicago, <laughs> basically my name right, right at the moment. Um, uh, and so this, uh, this is a, a, a private uh, art school. And so all of the students there are doing art, whether it's kinetic art, painting, sculpture, whatever it is. Um, and so, but they did get a real degree. It was a real bachelor's degree. And so as part of that, they had to take science. And so astronomy was one of the uh, courses that they offered and I was teaching that. Uh, and I remember the start of those courses quite vividly because the, the, the student body was of a different mindset than somebody who is at a four-year research kind of university. Um, and I draw the parallel between the first time I taught a course in the summer and the first time I started teaching art students um, was I made the mistake of too much symbol manipulation, right? Too many equations, right? Too many definitions. Um, and so it was really there that I learned to talk astronomy to people without the jargon, without symbols, without going over their heads, um, keeping it at the right level. And so that learning that skill set there, uh, both the first time I taught it and then later at the art school, um, was a really valuable skill. I mean, I stumbled several times. I made several mistakes. You know, it's like, ah, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. Um, but it's part of the learning process and becoming a good teacher, right? You're going to make mistakes and it's learning from those mistakes on, you know, curricular items that didn't work or things that you said in class and you go, oh boy, I didn't quite get that right. Um, <laughs> uh, and happens. just how you, it, it's really important to know who is in the course and then tailor your teaching to that group. Um, I think that was one of the most uh, valuable lessons that I got out of my very, uh, my early teaching experiences. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I enjoy my even my current teaching. I enjoy teaching the introductory courses as large as one wants to go, uh, in part because I have a lot of experience dealing with that group, as opposed to like a graduate student course on some topic, right? So I, I enjoy mixing it up with um, 
people who might be scared of science, people who might be scared of math, because we're not going to do that much, but um, but they can you know get the physical ideas down on what they're doing, and that that's what I really push for. So, um, so so like you, I enjoy getting my astronomy out, you know, sort of to the people, right? <laughs> to the people. Um, they're never going to be astronomers, or you know, point zero 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 one percent of them may end up being an astronomer, professional astronomer. Some fraction will be uh, amateur astronomers. They'll pick it up at some point in their life, maybe because of exposure to the course. Um, uh, but by and large, most of them are there to get their science credit for the course. And I get that. Um, I understand that. It's perfectly fine. Uh, and so I, I work with, with that body so that they come away from the course, hopefully remembering something in a few years on, on oh, yeah, that course is kind of cool. I get this and that out of astronomy. So. I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure they do. Frank, sorry. Now that I have the chance, may I ask just one last question? Sure. Mm -hmm. Um, during pandemics, most of us had to switch to the online version. What would you say is the main challenge you perceived about taking a face-to-face -face course mm -hmm. to the online version? Uh -huh. What um, is the challenge? Yeah. Um, I think the principal challenge is making sure that you are engaged with the course it's too easy to fade away in an online course where you know maybe you'll answer an email you know once every five days or you'll get on a discussion board and you'll post something once a week or something like that and, and that kind of frequency doesn't really work in an online course so you really have to establish presence in the course like you're there um and and throwing out questions for discussion, whether it's what is time or where does life go, or but that that you're engaged in that you impart a sense of caring about their learning experiences. And that I think is probably the most difficult transition to make in going from a purely in-person to an online. In some sense, it's even more work putting it online than it is in person, because in person they're coming to you. Right, you go into the classroom. They come to the classroom. So they're coming to you to to engage the course. Whereas in online, you have to make more of an effort to go to them. Yes, they will come. Some will come, but you've got to put more effort out in in making that connection with the students. Um, yeah. So I think to me, that would be mine. Mm -hmm. That's it. Cool. All right. Um, I want to thank you so much for chatting about your educational activities. And we're going to put a few uh, links below the video to some of the astronomy clubs and other activities uh, in, in YouTube channels that Cuauhtémoc uh, mentioned. Um, they're in Espanol. I did watch a few of them. So um, you might learn a little Spanish if you watch them. It's cool. <laughs> so very good. Um, that'll do. And so I hope this made your astronomy day and your astronomy education day just a little bit better. And we will see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.